I'm over in my Marford lathe at the moment and today I'm uh, I'm concentrating on making a few of the ancillary components for the valve chest and the cylinder covers etc and these components I'm doing are the glands and there's two off of each uh, obviously one for each side this one here is the the valve chest and it's got an OD of 5 8th diameter and this one is the cylinder cover with an OD of 3 quarters so they're, they're, they're identical in manufacturing it's just that one's a, a little bit bigger than the other so here's the valve chest and this is the gland where it fits on and it's to seal off the end where the spindle the valve spindle goes in you put an o-ring in this groove here in the actual valve chest and then it's bolted on with three ABA screws to seal this to seal this end off uh, and similarly with the valve cup with the piston covers on the cylinders exactly the same now I've, I've borrowed this drawing off a friend because it's in full size and it, it just shows you a little bit better but I've actually been working oh and by the way they're in they're in either phosphor bronze or gun metal these glands I mean I've been working uh, to this to this book which you've seen plenty of times now it's just that the drawings are a bit smaller so there's the glands and it tells you to make this jig to get your your holes lined up in, in each of the components so that they match. Well I've not bothered making that jig. Uh, I'm not I don't like I'm not cutting corners but I like to I like to if if I don't have to if something's not necessary I don't want to be making it. And what I'm doing I'm using the actual gland that I've made as my jig. And what I'm doing this this is the one off the valve chest and it fits like this that's the one I've made earlier and because where, where each of these glands fit they're the same diameter as the components that they fit on so you're very very limited for space before you're breaking through show you better on this one before you're breaking through to the outside of the boss so that's where the o-ring fits and these are the fixing screws 8BA and then the gland's going to fit on there like that with three screws and because you're limited it tells you in the book to make this jig that jig there well I've not bothered making the jig I've just doubled I've used my lens and doubled up as a jig and now I've done it put that down I've made the, the land instead of putting the final 3 sixteenths hole in and a quarter inch hole on the other gland we'll work on this one because they're identical just one's a bit bigger than other so it's the same principle instead of drilling the 3 sixteenths and reaming the 3 sixteenths hole in to the finished diameter I've just put a 1 eighth hole in and then on the end of the gland I've made another spig a step like a spigot 3 sixteenths diameter so imagine that with a 3 sixteenths diameter by a quarter inch long extension on it then once I'd made that up obviously then this 3 sixteenths diameter then fits into the actual valve chest or the cylinder cover whichever you're doing so that that 3 sixteenths end is going to fit down that centre hole and keep this 
gland central. Then what I've done, I've just um, made a little punch up to fit to fit through this hole. In fact, I didn't make a punch up. No, I've, 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 I'm mistaken there. I made it a tight fit into that hole, and I've just put it, set it up in my drilling machine and spotted it with the drill and then drilled them to the depth and you can see how close they are to the wall of the outside wall of the uh, component so it's important that it's done via making this jig then once I'd got it spotted and, and drilled to the appropriate depth and tapped 8BA I've put my land back in the forge or chuck set it up uh, within half a thousandth machine the spigot off what I'd left on that fitted in there machine that off and then finish drilling and reaming it to the 3 16th diameter required and then it ends up like that like that so that's the way I've done it and it saved me making a it saved me going to the trouble of making an extra an extra jig which I'll probably never ever use again anyway if, I, if I'd have made it then the other thing that uh, I've got to do and I'm just on with that now is make some 8BA screws I've not got no 8BA screws, I've got plenty of 6BA but because of the limited space at the edge of this hole you can't go no bigger than 8BA so I've got I've got some 6BA um, set screws with a hexagon head and what I'm doing the root diameter of a 6BA is the outside diameter of an 8BA, 8BA coincidentally so I'm machining the threads off a 6BA screw and then using my 8BA die I'm putting an 8BA thread back on and that saved me buying, buying the screws because I've got plenty of these other screws in and I'm just I'm just doing that at the moment so if you want to stick with me and see me do that for a minute, I'll show you. So I've set this, um, I've set this eight BA, uh, this six BA screw up. I've set it up in lathe, and it's running true. And I'm just going to turn the top of that six BA thread off. Now I'm only gripping, I'm only gripping on that very small hexagonal head. So I'm not gripping on much, it's only probably 3.30 seconds long that head, so you've got to just be very tentative and take very small cuts. Make sure you've got a sharp tool in and make sure your tool is exactly on centre right. I'm turn, turning these 6BA screws here into those 8BA screws there. I've just put a little pencil there just to show you the scale of these screws. I'm just taking two or three thousandths at a time off because you can see it's really stuck out quite a way for, for diameter and it's going to jump out if you don't if you're not careful. I've just come into the bottom of that thread now you can just see a slight witness mark on that screw so I know I'm getting down near to my diameter now I'm just taking a few spring cuts because because of the such small diameter it's got a bit of spring in it so I'm taking the same cut two or three times there and you can just see, well I don't know if you can see but I can it's taking just very very slight shavings off that screw 
just take a measurement of that. So that's it, I'm, I'm down to 0 0.086 now. That's the OD for 8BA. And because, I, because it's stuck out so far and I'm gripping on very hardly anything really, I'm not going to chamfer it with a tool, I'm just going to chamfer it with a little three cornered needle file. And that chamfered edge is just to allow the die, or the die nut, or the die, whichever you're using, just to enter that diameter easier. Now because I've, I've not got, a, I ain't actually got a, a die holder for my lathe this small. My die holders are usually bigger than this, or they are bigger than this, and um, I'm not normally doing this size work. So I've just put this in my die holder, my small die holder, and it's an 8BA. And I've got a, a bolt in me, in me chuck in my tailstock with a very, with a flat end, with a flat top on it. And I'm just going to offer that up to keep it square while I start the thread. Put a bit of cutting compound on. And then uh, just follow up the, with the tailstock just to keep that die holder square. Just to get your thread started a few turns. And then once you've got it started and you know it's square, you can remove tailstock. And then just continue cutting. And I've got to, I've got to put a quarter inch long thread on this. And I'm just using me, the, the width of my die holder as a gauge, because that's it's near enough to a quarter. So when my thread comes through the die holder, I know to stop, and that's how I'm going to make them all the same. So that's that's a, that's one of my eight ba screws finished now. And it should come out similar to that one, or if not same. Let me get me a bit of paper to put it on so you can see it better. I've got another uh, eight, now seven of those to make now. 12 in total. I'll catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching then. Bye for now.